In the United States Capitol Building, in the chamber of the House of Representatives, there are 23 marble relief portraits that depict historical figures. These individuals were selected for their contributions to the principles that created the foundation of law in the United States. Here's kind of a close-up photo of some of those relief photos or pictures. Here's a picture of the House chamber. So you can see them up on the wall here. In this photo, these aren't great um, photographs, but up on the wall surrounding uh, the chamber. So in this photo, you can see that this is the relief for Sir William Blackstone. Uh, this is Napoleon, uh, Thomas Jefferson, uh, George Mason is up here. Um, one of these is Robert Joseph Pothier of France, um, and I think it might have gotten cut off in the in the photograph, um, but John Baptiste Colbert is on this wall as well. But we're not going to talk about any of those in this video. In this video, we're going to talk about this one right here. This is a Babylonian king named Hammurabi. Um, you've probably read in the textbook about the Code of Hammurabi. Um, so on this chamber wall opposite of this wall, uh, his relief photo or p uh, picture would be um, on that back wall. So he's the sixth king of Babylon. He uh, ruled Babylon from around 1792 BC until his death in 1750, 1750 BC. His contribution, which is, again, the Code of Hammurabi, is one of the longest, most preserved ancient legal texts. It's, it's not the oldest legal text in the world, um, but it's one of the oldest. The primary text can be seen in this photo, inscribed on a steel uh, or a monument. Probably uh, this is made of diorite. Uh, this particular monument was found in modern-day Iran, around 1901 uh, and currently is located in the Louvre Museum in Paris, France. Mostly it's a collection of legal precedents. This particular steel uh, consists of a prologue. Uh, obviously you can see up here it also has a uh, uh, imagery. I believe I've read that this is a depiction of uh, Hammurabi and the, and the sun god or the Babylonian sun god. Um, I'm not a hundred percent sure about that, uh, but the text here uh, consists of a prologue, a code of laws, and an epilogue. Uh, within that code of laws, there are 282 specifically written uh, laws. They're all written in the if-then form. So if blah blah blah, then here's your consequence or punishment or result. Some of these laws are pretty notable for their harsh punishments. Uh, for example, uh, number six uh, reads something like, If anyone steal the property of a temple or of the court, he shall be put to death. And also the one who receives the stolen thing from him shall be put to death. Number 22, if anyone is committing a robbery and is caught, then he shall be put to death. Uh, number 282, the, the last code of law, If a slave say to his master, You are not my master, if they convict him, his master shall cut off his ear. Um, so it goes um, a lot like that throughout those 282 laws. They're not all like that. Some of them govern family law. Some of them govern uh, economic relationships and things along those lines. Um, but some of these laws provide a, an early example of the principle of lex talionis. Uh, which is often referred to as an eye for an eye, probably something that you're familiar with. Anyway, that's all I've got for you today on the Code of Hammurabi. If you want to learn more about the translated text of that code, uh, you can check out the Avalon Project on the uh, Yale Law School website.